Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiryFantasyArt.com and today I'm actually doing a fairly significantly different piece. Uh, the main request was that this be a black and white image uh, and that it be anatomy related. Now it wasn't for a fantasy uh, based creature, it was specified that it be anatomy based. So for this reason, I decided to actually include uh, some animation portions to this. Uh, so what I'm working on right now is uh, the basic structure from which I'm going to uh, create my essential keys for a walk cycle for a skeleton. Now I do go through a couple of different stages for this piece. Uh, initially I start actually adding in uh, muscle anatomy uh, to certain parts of the body of this character, um, but I do remove them afterwards and ended up only keeping silhouettes. Uh, the reason for this is I was going for a very modern style, um, so simplicity is normally the key factor in making a piece that's more modern and fits in a modern decor. So I decided to go with almost a puppet-like uh, theater type idea, so I used shadow puppets as my reference material for this. Um, so as you can see I'm just uh, roughing out right now the basic um, essential keys and movements that I'm actually going to work on for this character and I'm keeping it extremely rough at this stage. It is very important I keep it rough because I do end up making a lot of changes throughout because uh, this is essentially a test period when it comes to this drawing. Uh, there's a lot of factors that are involved in this, there's a lot of complicated uh, portions, so I do have to take my time in order to do this properly. Uh, the first reference book that I'm actually using for this is The Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist by Stephen Rogers Peck. Uh, this is really good if you're trying to understand um, anatomy in general because uh, the artist actually included some very helpful notes on how the muscles and the bone structures actually move and how to actually draw them properly. Uh, so this is an extremely good reference material that I do recommend if you ever get the chance uh, to pick up. It's well worth um, the money that you'll be spending on that. Now as for uh, the animation portion, I'm actually using a different reference material um, and I'm using the Animator Survival Kit by Richard Williams. Uh, director of animation who framed Robert, who framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, so this is essentially a essential guide if you're into animation in general, uh, because it actually breaks down the keys and how to actually manipulate key drawings to achieve very realistic or cartoony um, type motion in your characters. Uh, so for this reason, I actually use it as a helpful tool for figuring out poses for characters and in this case because I was creating an almost animation type feel to this character uh, and this anatomy drawing uh, this is what I was actually doing. So as you can see um, because this is supposed to be extremely rough because I'm not sure if I'm actually going to end up using this drawing later on um, I'm essentially just blocking in the shadows, uh, seeing how they look, uh, modifying the images uh, copying and pasting certain portions uh, just so that I keep the proportions correctly uh, done because one of the important factors when you're actually drawing an animation is that you want the proportions to read extremely well if they don't it just looks wrong um, and it's a serious problem if the proportions and it can become a serious problem if the proportions are extremely off for a character uh, now this is normally the case for uh, traditional animation but that same principle and rule applies to uh, 3D or flash, flash base animation styles as well because uh, in flash base animation styles you actually tend to skew uh, the body parts to give it a slightly more realistic motion to it uh, but by doing so you have to still be aware of the fact that uh, the skewing can cause deformations and you have to compensate for that in the structure. 
So I'm essentially using uh, my key first drawing as my reference to all of my other drawings. So everything has to relate uh, structure-wise as I move along in this image. I'm also realigning uh, the spinal cord and the head as I go and adding or removing detail. Uh, so this general structure works really good for the, the beginning stages but has to be heavily modified afterwards. And because I am only working with silhouettes, it makes this entire process significantly easier to actually do. Now uh, this portion actually probably only took about uh, three hours to do. Um, the most difficult part was actually right after the silhouettes were completed and I was actually trying to figure out how I was going to incorporate more anatomy portions to this drawing while still making it and keeping it as a black and white image. So I actually ended up uh, not keeping that information going back to the skeleton just because it didn't read properly. Um, but I actually ended up using also Illustrator to see roughly how those changes would be affected. So this entire drawing probably actually took about five hours um, and that's mainly because I was spending about two to two and a half hours experimenting heavily with um, how I was actually going to render this drawing and what elements I was going to actually include. Uh, because this is an actual uh, essentially an animated uh, character uh, it does require quite a few revisions to make it look correct and I wasn't sure at the end how the results would affect the overall composition. Uh, keep in mind it has to look uh, modern and has to still fit together because if it doesn't then I can't keep it. So I'm just uh, working on some of those uh, bones in the legs and knees. I've just started moving on to um, my third drawing right now and as you can see I've actually added a shoulder blade because at this angle you would begin to see the shoulder blade of this character. So in this uh, initial render you're going to actually see me render just essentially the one size and then from that I'm actually going to copy it and move it to the side uh, so I can see roughly what it would look like afterwards. The final image that you see, however, has the modifications to the anatomy so that it is actually properly switched uh, because essentially you require eight keys in total, four for one side of the body movement and then another four for the other side. So every time you step forward, essentially you have to animate two sets of keys. You're animating the first set for the first foot and then you're animating the second set for the second foot. Uh, so for this reason I actually did quite a bit of work that you won't see in the recording uh, just to prevent um, a lot of repetitive work from being shown. So this is actually almost completed as you can see I'm doing some final touches on the anatomy making sure it all reads correctly. really working out that rib cage anatomy. It's very important to get the rib cage correct. Um, if you don't, it does show. Uh, so I do spend normally a lot of time on that. So this is the muscle anatomy that I actually started working on. Uh, in the first stage I was actually uh, doing the wrong side of the leg. So I actually ended up erasing that and you'll see me actually erase it fairly shortly. Um, essentially I was trying to see also how this would look, whether or not it would look appealing. Uh, so it was just a really quick stage for me to figure out whether or not I was uh, going to actually keep this. Um, at this stage it looks actually not too too bad. Um, the skeleton underneath however looks significantly better at this moment in time. So I just deleted that and I'm starting to work on the proper uh, side of the leg. So this is the furthest leg from the viewer. Uh, part of it is hidden by the leg that is closest to the viewer and I'm slowly integrating different portions of the anatomy as I move forward in the animated keys. So essentially I wanted to show the progression of the different layers of anatomy muscle. Uh, so as I'm working I'm slowly adding that information in to make it uh, look more readable. I'm also checking all my proportions to make sure that they are correct. 
Uh, so I ended up actually redoing the top part of that leg, as you can see. And I'm just keeping it extremely rough, because I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to keep this any of this information at the moment. Because um, this is something that's new, so I need to test it out and get a feel for the drawing to see whether or not any of these amounts, elements work at all. So I've just started on the arm. And once again, I'm slowly incorporating different layers of the anatomy and muscles uh, to give a more realistic look. So the muscle anatomy is essentially being animated at the same time as the character is moving. Now this is also a really great exercise um, that you could do if you're trying to understand human anatomy and how the body moves as well. Uh, by doing this you actually figure out more about how the muscles overlap and how the position of the body affects these muscles um, in a given character. Uh, so this is something that you could do. Uh, it would probably require quite a bit of time to get something that's accurate and readable. Uh, but it's well worth the time if you have some time to spend um, just to work on those core skills. Now as I'm drawing uh, these muscles I am referring to my anatomy book and I'm referring to a couple of additional books as well just to make sure that they are correct. A third book I was using as reference uh, was called The Human Figure and Anatomy for the Artist by David K. Rubens. So this book is really good because it shows um, both sides of the muscles and fully rotates it so it's easier to keep track of how those muscles will interact. Now between both of these anatomy books I was able to get enough information to actually render fairly accurately um, what you see here. Now because once again this needs to be black and white I've kept this to a grayscale level uh, where I've actually uh, tried to reduce the amount of uh, fading in and out that is required. Uh, but doing this I'm able to get uh, something that is easier to convert to a black and white image using Illustrator. Uh, Illustrator does have a feature uh, as long as you're aware of how to properly use it which allows you to do a live trace and when you do this live trace you can choose how many colors you wish to have and essentially what I did is I just converted it to a black and white image and it gave me a fairly accurate results. Um, now once again in order to do this you do need to make sure that you have enough contrast so um, I'm actually working on that right now and I have to hide certain layers, show certain layers in order to make it more readable as well. So I'm hiding portions of the skeleton and fading it out. I've just live traced this and I'm rearranging the key so that they make more sense uh, because my beginning key does not have any muscle anatomy so I've decided to remove uh, move this to the far back uh, and even out the spacing a bit more. Uh, since this is vectorized it makes it a lot easier to work from and I'm actually doing a quick comparison here to see um, how these different images relate to each other. Now, although uh, the last four images essentially tie in together, I did not keep the muscle anatomy for the main reason that it did not tie in well enough with the initial four drawings. Uh, so for this reason, I actually just went to um, a basic skeleton and to break up the silhouette, I actually added some hats. So I made this character actually look uh, more like an actual cowboy um, because of this. So it was a very simple way for me to actually just add a little bit more detail to his character so that he actually has more character to him and he has a, more of a story to him. Now on the final image that you're going to see in just a moment, um, if you take a closer look you'll actually notice that uh, the arms and the rib cage and uh, the hip bones 
uh, all change according to the proper movement. So I've made those modifications off screen uh, just to save a little bit of time in the recording process. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you guys soon. So thank you and take care.